Good evening and welcome to our evening service for Trinity Sunday. Let's begin with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for who you are and who you are to us, our Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you made a way for us to get to know God himself. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you lead and guide our lives, even when we don't think there's a way ahead. You make a way and you bring us closer in deep relationship to our Father, God, the creator of the universe. Lord God, we thank you for all that you mean to us. And especially today, as we think of you, three parts and yet one together. Lord Jesus, we thank you because of your death and resurrection. You made that way to him and we praise you that you are our saviour. We thank you, Father, that you are with us now. Wherever we are, you are there, ever present with us. And we thank you for the relationship that we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So now we're going to sing number 11 in singing the faith, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, that Trinitarian hymn. After which we will hear there are two Bible readings for this evening, John chapter 3 and from Romans chapter 8.
This is the Gospel according to St John, chapter 3, and the first 17 verses. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe it if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. Thanks be to God. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, my brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to. For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people, and we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. Amen. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running 
there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel and shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise image. This is a computer sound wave generated image of the Trinity. Look how beautiful it is. It reminds me of the Celtic knot symbol of the Trinity. Three parts and yet interwoven to create the one image together in beauty. Now it's quite difficult to explain the Trinity. Three parts of God and yet one. 
Now you could go down the image of talking about items that have got three parts and yet are one thing, but we won't go down that way today. If we see God in the light of relationship, it believe, I believe it makes it so much easier to understand. Each part different and yet working together as one in relationship. It's rather like human relationships as we work together as one. But the main bedrock for that is love. And that we see in this triune Godhead. Nicodemus, in our reading today from John's Gospel, chapter 3, we see him seeing something special in Jesus. And he wants to know more. So he goes, notice, at night to see Jesus, probably because he didn't want to be seen by his fellow members of the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin. But he'd seen Jesus perform miracles. He'd he heard him teach and he wanted to know more. This Jesus was different. Inquiring of Jesus, Jesus says to him, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Now, Nicodemus replies pretty much the same as anyone would today. How can anyone enter their mother's womb and be born again? But Jesus says it is by water and the Spirit. Now, baptism in water is very symbolic of spiritual cleansing, removing the past failures of sin and allowing the Holy Spirit to renew and to give a new start, a new beginning. This comes only by a willingness on the seek of the seeker to start a new life, a new beginning in Jesus. Have a look at these three images. What did you see? Not much, I hear you say. Now have a look at them again, but more slowly. What do you see now? How did spending time on those images affect you? When we're rushing around, we lose the on, out on the experience of relationships as they should be, not least with Jesus. Nicodemus had an intellectual view of Jesus as a teacher of religion. But Jesus wanted Nicodemus to see God in relationship and to accept him as Lord of his life. The flash of those images was like an intellectual view of Jesus that we often have of the things that we already know about him. But Jesus wants a relationship with us, for us to spend time getting to really know him. As we looked longer at those images, we started to see what was really there. And there was so much more than just the first glance. 
we started to see Jesus in present day circumstances and how God's love behind the image was brought to the foreground. And it, it was really quite moving to see Jesus through God's love in every situation. We don't hear in John chapter 3 of Nicodemus um, actually receiving Jesus into his life. But in John chapter 7, we see him defending Jesus at council. And in John chapter 19, we see him with Joseph of Arimathea anointing Jesus' body for burial after his death on the cross. It appears that Nicodemus did indeed choose to follow Christ and make him Lord of his life. John 3, 16, that very famous verse in the Bible. We hear of God the Father who loved the world so much that he gave his son Jesus to it that whoever believes in him, that is, chooses to start a new life in him and be born again by God's Holy Spirit, and who will then have eternal life. We believe and make Jesus our Lord and the Spirit tells us that we are God's children in his family. Our other reading from Romans chapter 8 tells us that we are then heirs and co-heirs, joint heirs with Jesus, if we turn from our sinful, natural nature to take on God's Holy Spirit, spiritual nature. And all that God is, we can receive. We are then in relationship with the triune God. We can call God Father. And in the text, it actually uses the word Abba. Now, that's a Greek word for um, a very close relationship between a father and his child. The word Daddy is very intimate and close and deep in affection and love. Have you ever said to God, I love you? It is the most moving thing to experience when you're praying like that. You, you feel that sense in your spirit of the presence of God, the creator of the universe, and yet who loves us so deeply. That's relationship with him. God loves to hear us say those words to him. Those two passages that we've looked at briefly today reveal three members of the Trinity. Now you won't find the word Trinity in the Bible. It's just a churchy word as a way to try and explain three different parts of God and yet who is one. In Genesis chapter 1 at creation, God said, let us make man, humans, in our image. Who was he talking to? Well, we know from John chapter 1 that Jesus who is the Word made flesh and brought to earth, 
was right there with God in the beginning. And we also know the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the waters before anything was created. Three parts, three persons talking in relationship. We are made in God's image. We have a mind which controls our will and our emotions. And we have a spirit, the very heart of us, the part of us that's really real, and the part that connects with God's spirit when we receive Jesus into our lives. We are connected by God's spirit. And it's the part of us that goes on beyond this life into the next and for eternity to be with God. Now, the mind and the spirit are not visible, but we know that they are real. And then we live in a visible body. The Bible calls it our house or our tent. That part does decay, but one day will be resurrected like Jesus's body. I'll leave you to think about how that image relates to us, God's creation, and who he is. Three in one. That's God's love relationship for each and every one of us. Are we deepening that relationship with him, taking time to be with him? Let's grow and deepen our relationship to him. Now we're going to sing about that love relationship for our Father, for the Son, Jesus, and for God's Holy Spirit. Number six in singing of faith. Father, we love you.
So now we come to our prayers for others. Let's pray together. Father God, we know that you are indeed with those who are suffering the most. And Father, we would indeed remember those who are struggling with life at this time. We remember the world in which we live and the world that you created, the world that you long is in relationship with you, but is deeply marred. And Father, we would pray for those places in the world where it's hard to live. We remember India and the ongoing crisis with their COVID situation. Lord, we pray that you will supply their need. Be with those who have lost loved ones and for those who are still sick and dying. Lord God, we pray for the Middle East, particularly Israel and Palestine at this time of unrest. Lord, we pray that you will bring your peace and may they find a hope, your hope for the future. Lord God, we, we know that closer to home there are places where there is great suffering, where people are living with loss, whatever that might mean for them, whether it be loss of jobs or whether it be loss of business or loss of a loved one. Lord, you are with them and we pray that you will give them a hope your hope in the future. And Father, we remember those that we know personally who are living with suffering, maybe relationship breakdown, maybe they are waiting test results or are in hospital, sick at home. Father God, we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you will bring your peace to their hearts, your healing to their bodies, and your hope for the future. We thank you that you indeed are listening to our hearts cry for those in desperate need. We pray you will be all that they need at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God's
And so as we close our service this evening, we look at a benediction for today. May God the Father who creates us, Jesus the Son who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us, hold us in deep relationship with him and each other. And so we'll join in the grace with each other, wherever you are. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Good night and God bless you.